Hi, my name is Cedric, and I'm a PhD student at École Normale Supérieure in Paris, France, working with Professor Florence Zakala. Here is a longer video with details about our result on asymptotic errors for convex penalized linear regression beyond Gaussian matrices. So, let's start with the position of the problem. We consider a fairly classical problem in machine learning, which is the recovery of the ground truth vector x0 and r to the power n from m potentially noisy linear measurements in a vector y. To do so, we employ a convex penalized linear regression, and we minimize the square loss with a convex penalty little f. The ground truth vector can be pulled from any well-behaved distribution, namely with bounded second-order moment, and f is chosen as a convex and separable function. Finally, for the remainder of this analysis, we will place ourselves in a high-dimensional limit, meaning that m and n go to infinity, with the fixed ratio alpha equals to m over n. Before moving any further, just a few examples. Uh, adding an L2 penalty gives the rich regression, which is the simplest building block of machine learning, and is the basis of many modern learning methods, such as kernel regression or neural network training. Adding an L1 penalty gives the lasso, which is a, a ubiquitous method in statistics and um, is very popular for compress sensing and variable selection and essentially sparse problems. Finally, combining the L2 and L1 penalty gives the elastic net, which is a combined regularization and variable selection and is also a mainstream learning method uh, nowadays. Now, our objective uh, is to quantify how good the regression is, and to do so, we would like to characterize exactly and analytically, if possible, the asymptotic reconstruction performance, which is defined as the average uh, in the asymptotic limit, the average mean squared error between uh, the estimator x star and the ground truth vector x0. So understanding this uh, precisely is one of the fundamental building blocks of modern statistical learning. And for this analysis, uh, the choice of the matrix F and the penalty little f is crucial. Actually, this is a well-known problem for IID Gaussian matrices. And for the ridge regression, there is a very simple closed form solution. And so well-established uh, random matrix theory result can give a straightforward analytical solutions for this asymptotic reconstruction performance. As far as the lasso is concerned, uh, it has already been solved as well, uh, notably by Bayati and Montanari in 2011 using message passing algorithms, and later on by Trampolidis and collaborators in 2015 using Gordon's comparison theorem, which is a form of Gaussian process comparison theorem. So now, what are the questions that we would like to ask and answer in this talk? Well, we would like to know if it's possible to go beyond the ID Gaussian matrices. Uh, more, more precisely, is it possible to go towards more realistic matrices? And then, is it possible to derive a proof which does not depend on any specific structural property uh, of a given regularization, but instead is valid for any convex regularization little f? Our answer is that it's possible, and uh, to go beyond the ID Gaussian setup, we will propose uh, rotationally invariant matrices. Let me define what a rotationally invariant matrix is. So the singular value decomposition of the matrix F reads U D V transpose, and we will take U and V as being hard distributed, meaning that they are uniformly sampled on the orthogonal groups of their respective dimensions. Now, uh, the matrix D, which is the most important, uh, contains the singular values of F, and we will take these singular values as being sampled from any distribution with a compact support. As far as the regularization is concerned, we will allow any convex and separable function little f. Let's now move to our main result, which is an analytical solution for the asymptotic reconstruction error in the problem we just described. And it's given by the fixed point of the following equations, uh, E and V. Now, the exact detail of those equations is not very important. But what's important is that you can see that the effect of the arbitrary singular value distribution is incorporated in this R transform, which is a well-known and well-established transform from random matrix theory, and is basically defined as an average over the spectral distribution of F transpose F. Now, the effect of the regularization is, uh, is taken into account uh, by its proximal operator, which is a cornerstone element of convex analysis and is defined as the argmin of the function plus a square distance parameterized by a little gamma. So now, before uh, moving forward, uh, let's just have a little bit of background on this result. It was initially actually conjectured by uh, Sandy Prangan and collaborators in 2009, and later on by Kabashima and Vekapera in 2012 and 2014. And these conjectures were done using the replica method from statistical physics, 
So what's the replica method? It's a very powerful and very adaptable analytical method to uh, solve such problems and is a statistical physics inspired. However, it is not mathematically rigorous. Now, proving replica method is a, is a very active field in applied mathematics and is actually typically done using Gaussian interpolation methods, uh, which are mostly due to Guerra and Toninelli in 2002 and famously reused in 2003 by Talagrand uh, to prove uh, fundamental results in statistical mechanics. And more recently, uh, notably Jean Barbier and collaborators used these methods to prove uh, very interesting results in machine learning. Now, the main limitation of uh, such methods is that, again, uh, they only hold most of the time for IID Gaussian matrices. And what we propose here, what we would like to show, is a proof of a replica formula for matrices with an arbitrary bounded spectrum. And our proof is based on message passing algorithms. So now, before moving to the sketch of proof, let's have a little bit of experimental verification. And we propose to do so uh, with an implementation of uh, our theoretical prediction with a, a lasso uh, on non-Gaussian data. So on the left-hand side uh, plot, we have uh, the mean squared error of this uh, lasso regression as a function of the regularization strength for two different types of matrices. The first one in green is a standard Gaussian matrix. And the blue one is a row orthogonal matrix. So row orthogonal matrices are ubiquitous in signal processing. And uh, uh, the singular value decomposition in this case is just zeros and ones. So we see that there is a very good agreement between the theory and the experiment. And we recover a classical and well-known result from signal processing, which is that the row orthogonal matrices uh, perform better than the standard Gaussian ones. Now, for the right-hand side plot, we show the mean squared error as a function of the aspect ratio of the matrix, uh, the matrix F for two different values of the regularization strength. One in green uh, is a fairly uh, reasonable value, 0.1, and the other one in blue is a vanishingly small value of the regularization, 10 to the power minus 4. And uh, what we recover is a, a well-known and uh, recently studied phenomenon, which is called, uh, has been called the double descent which is uh, an error peak at alpha equals to 1. So it was initially observed with Gaussian data, and here we reproduce it with non-Gaussian data. So an important thing is that uh, even though the result is a, our theoretical result is an asymptotic result, it works very well at finite sizes. Here, for example, for the right-hand side plot, we took n equals to 250 and m equals to alpha times n. Now, another interesting thing is that this double descent phenomenon, uh, initially observed with Gaussian data, has actually a non-trivial dependence uh, on the singular value decomposition, uh, the singular value distribution, I'm sorry, uh, of the matrix F. So here, for example, to reproduce this phenomenon with non-Gaussian data, we had to uh, specifically design uh, an eigenvalue distribution, and we chose it as a, a uniform distribution with a specifically chosen support. So this further motivates our study. Now, let's now look at the sketch of proof. So we will give uh, each of the key points of the proof, and then we'll give details about each step and how to handle them. So let's go. The, the sketch of proof is actually built on three key points. So the first point will be to build a sequence whose fixed point solves problem one. So we want to build a sequence of iterates, and we want the fixed point of these iterates to be x star, the estimator that we are interested in. So this would be typically an algorithm. Then uh, what we will look to have is an asymptotic statistical characterization of each of the iterates. Again, asymptotic because we are working in the asymptotic limit. And finally, uh, we will want to ensure the convergence of this sequence. Thus, if we have, if we have uh, point number one, point number two, and point number three, at the fixed point of the sequence, we will have the estimator x star, which we are interested in, and its statistical properties, which is exactly what we are trying to achieve. Now, how do we handle these three points? Uh, so the first point will be handled using a vector approximate message passing, which is an algorithm, uh, a belief propagation uh, inspired algorithm, which was initially proposed by Rangon et al. in 2016. So there was a reprint in 2019, but that's not important. And one of the key features of vector AMP is that it has a statistical characterization, an exact asymptotical statistical characterization uh, of each of its iterates with the so-called state evolution equations, which we will present later on. Finally, we will uh, study the convergence of vector AMP to complete the proof. Now, just a little bit of background about vector AMP. 
It has been actually developed at the crossroads between statistical physics, variational inference, and information theory. And it is specifically derived to handle rotationally invariant matrices. And this is why we chose this algorithm for this proof. Let's now look at point number one, so the sequence itself, which is generated using vector approximate message passing. So let's have a look at the iterations uh, of vector AMP. So the exact detail is not so important, but it's actually quite, uh, quite simple to get a high level generic idea of this algorithm. So we have equation two, which is uh, two estimators x hat one and x hat two, which are basically produced by applying the proximal operators of the two elements of the loss. So x hat one is obtained by applying the proximal operator uh, of the regularization function f, and x hat two is obtained by applying the proximal operator of the square loss, which is just a least square step, basically. Now, steps three and four are uh, adaptative step size-like parameters, uh, which are automatically updated. And then step five is just the update of the initial estimates. Now, uh, a meaningful interpretation of vector AMP is that it's, uh, it's exactly like an adaptative step size proximal descent. So where does the adaptative part comes from? Well, this is a Bayesian-inspired algorithm, so scalar parameters are typically implicitly updated. OK, so let's, let's now look at the statistical properties, uh, the so-called state evolution equations. And this was rigorously proved uh, in uh, Hong Kong et al. in 2016, the original vector AMP paper, is that the estimators produced by vector AMP are asymptotically uh, Gaussians centered around the ground truth vector x0. Now, the variance of these Gaussians uh, is given by the full state evolution equations, which we give here for completeness. And uh, the, these equations link the variance of these Gaussians with the parameters of vector EMP, basically. Now, uh, these equations have two interesting features. The first interesting feature is that at their fixed point, they match exactly the replica prediction that we gave earlier and that we are trying to prove. And then uh, the second interesting feature is that these equations can be solved completely independently uh, of the actual algorithm itself, provided one has oracle access to the ground truth distribution x0. And we will be using this later on for our uh, proof. Let's now move to the convergence analysis. And to simplify this convergence analysis, we will be introducing oracle vector approximate message passing, where um, we simplify it by fixing the scalar parameters a1, a2, v1, and v2. And we take them from being uh, those given by the fixed point of the state evolution equations. So this simplifies uh, the iterations of vector AMP. And we, uh, so the iterations that we give here in the middle. And then we can further condense uh, these iterations into a single big operator, which we give here at the bottom of the slide. And we just rewrote the least square step as the proximal to highlight the similarity between this and the proximal descent methods, such as here, piecemeal rockford descent. So now, uh, how do we study the convergence of this? Well, actually, using the properties uh, of proximal operators and basically the matrix norm of the least square step, we can derive an upper bound on the Lipschitz constant of this big iteration, which uh, here you can see is dependent on the parameters A1, A2, the minimum and, mi and maximum eigenvalues of the matrix F transpose F, and sigma1, which is the strong convexity constant of the penalty F. Now, the question that we ask is, could this be a contraction so that we are sure that the, the sequence converges? Well, actually, we can impose the convergence by adding a, a sufficiently strongly convex uh, additional penalty. This is very easy to do. Uh, we can just add a, a, an additional L2 penalty. So this modifies uh, the upper bound uh, on the Lipschitz constant in the following way. So you can see lambda 2 appearing here at the denominator. And for a sufficiently strongly convex problem, using upper and lower bounds on A1 and A2, which can be derived using the state evolution equations, it's possible to actually uh, bring this upper bound strictly below one, which forces the convergence. We provide experimental verification of this, pack, uh, of this fact in the paper with a simple implementation of Oracle VAMP. And now, uh, so the proof is complete uh, for large enough lambda 2. And finishing the proof is actually just a matter of analytic continuation. And so, we just show that our proof is complete for an open subset of lambda 2, so above a certain lambda 2 star up to infinity. Now, the dependence in lambda 2 is analytical in the replica equations. This is easy to check. And then the dependence in lambda 2 is also analytical in the coordinates of x star. And so it's possible to extend the result for any value of the lambda 2 parameter uh, with an analytic continuation theorem, which is due to Kranz and Parks in uh, 2002, and which allows us to, uh, to take lambda 2 equals to 0 and to basically complete the proof. 
And there we have it. Thank you very much.